Can you use ChatGPT for blogging? And if you can, should you? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So like many bloggers and online writers, I've been using ChatGPT extensively for the past few weeks. It's helping me with different parts of the writing process. However, there are a few caveats if you're going to use it for writing a blog post. And basically, you're not going to put in a simple prompt that says write me a blog post because the results just won't be very good. In this video, I'm going to walk through how you can use ChatGPT for blogging, what you should watch out for and what you should expect from it. Before you go using ChatGPT to create AI content, it's helpful to get familiar with Google's search guidelines on the topic. So I was interested to see that they actually say it's OK to use AI content in certain contexts. The caveat is certain contexts. And when you think about it, it makes sense because you'll often find news websites using AI to generate information about the latest football match or TV show. In fact, they describe or Google describes on their page about how automation can help with creating AI content. However, creators, and that includes bloggers, should consider EEAT. So that stands for experience, expertise, authoritativeness and trustworthiness. In other words, don't just build an entire site with AI. It's better to have bylines and also to have personal insights and somebody who reviews the content that you're going to produce or the blog posts that you're going to write with tools like ChatGPT. So in summary, uh, appropriate use of AI is not against Google's guidelines. However, I would still be cautious about building an entire site with AI content. And if you're going to use AI content, do pay particular attention to what Google says about adding disclosures about when you use AI and also to add clear bylines uh, to your content as well. And also ask yourself, whatever you're publishing, is it useful, helpful and original? In other words, if you're using ChatGPT to simply regurgitate content and publish it as a blog post, chances are you could get slapped with a Google penalty or you just won't rank at some point. My first recommendation is to provide as specific a prompt as possible. So I gave ChatGPT a word count. I explained who the audience is. I gave it the keywords which I'd researched elsewhere and I explained I was looking for a content brief that I could give to a writer about what they should include in this article. GPT produced this content brief, so a 50 to 100 word introduction, which is about the length of a standard introduction for an article of this length. A section about preparing to train, building endurance, strength training, nutrition, recovery, tips for race day, and then a conclusion. And as content briefs go, this was actually quite good. Now, I may want to build this out further by asking the writer to include personal insights about if they've trained for this type of race, or to include some statistics about average finishing times for a half marathon. And I also may want to ask the writer to include specific training sessions that an aspiring marathon runner could undertake. So that's not really in the content brief. So again, I would need to review what ChatGPT produces before deciding to write this or outsource it. I also use ChatGPT when blogging to write headlines and meta descriptions. So usually I ask it to write five to 10 headlines because then I can pick the best one. And also a meta description. So you can see here it's produced a number of headlines, the ultimate guide to training for half marathon, train smarter, not harder, tips for half marathon training, maximizing your half marathon training. So it's worked in the keyword into each one of, or into almost each one of these headlines. So I probably picked the one that's most relevant to the article in question. Now, when I was reading the meta descriptions, some of them were quite long. Uh, so I wanted a shorter meta description. And I also wanted to make sure that the meta description included my target keyword training for half marathon as well. So building endurance for half marathon is arguably a different topic to training for a half marathon. I went ahead and asked ChatGPT to shorten these meta descriptions by five words each. And this is the type of thing that AI is quite good at. So the type of content editing, that's just a little bit time consuming and a little bit boring to do. Writing meta descriptions, for example. If I want, I could ask ChatGPT to help me come up with some image ideas. So I can just simply say, suggest 10 images to go along with the article. And then I could search for these on Pixel Bay or Shuttered Stock or some other stock image website. And this is also something that I could give to a virtual assistant or somebody who's helping me publish the blog posts on my site if I don't want to actually spend time sourcing images myself. If you're publishing a site that's getting a good bit of traffic, it's always good practice to have an email list. However, it can be sometimes painful to actually write an email after you've written the article. So again, ChatGPT can help with this. So I want to email subscribers of my email list about the article about half marathon training. So it's given me a subject line and it's given me some body copy that I can use in the email. Now I could ask it to, 
to give me multiple subject lines if I didn't like this one. And arguably the tone here is a little bit dry and informal. So for example, it uses uh, words like we, whereas I would rather reframe this and write it from my own point of view. But it's certainly enough of a starting point for me to have something that I could send if I was in a rush or something to edit. The same applies to creating social media posts. So I asked it to create a Twitter thread about the article in question. And it gave me 10 bland tweets. I don't think anybody would click on these. Uh, most people don't click on links and tweets anymore. So I gave it a different prompt and I said, I need the article turned into a single Twitter thread about training for a half marathon and it should offer tips for my followers. And now it's actually giving me a thread that I, I could potentially edit and rewrite before posting uh, on Twitter. Um, so this is again quite good and could be a time saver. Now I wouldn't actually use any of these verbatim. I would still go ahead and edit it so they sound like they're written from me rather than from an AI tool. So after researching some competitor content on this topic, I realized that a lot of sites that publish articles about training for a half marathon for the first time include actual plans that readers can follow. So I asked ChatGPT to come up with a 12 week training plan, which is about the length of time it would take to train for your first half marathon. And the plan is quite good. It has three to four sessions a week, and these go up to five sessions depending on the week in question. However, I did notice some issues with the plan, which I was only able to spot because I've completed several half marathon training plans myself. So I'll show you one particular example. Uh, so ChatGPT on week nine recommends completing a 100 minute tempo run. I don't know any half marathon runner, particularly somebody training for their half marathon who would run 100 minutes as part of a tempo training session. If you're not familiar with a tempo training session, it basically involves running where your heart rate is not quite at maximum, but a little bit below maximum. In other words, it's a really hard effort. And typically a new runner would only do this for 20 to 30 minutes. So a session like this would probably lead to them getting injured. And this is something that only somebody who's trained for a half marathon could know. In other words, if I publish this content for bottom, I may assume that it's correct because it was produced by AI, but it's not. Another example is the uh, week 11, which is the week before the half marathon. So most half marathon training plans for newbies would have people taking a or following a reduced training plan in week 11, so they're fresh and rested. However, ChatGPT has these, the new aspiring half marathoner completing strength training, a 60 minute tempo, which is incredibly difficult, and a 90 minute long run. So arguably they were at a great chance of either injury or going into the race feeling uh, tired. You'll also notice that ChatGPT actually stopped, so I had to give it a prompt to continue with this particular half marathon training plan as well. ChatGPT can be helpful uh, with some aspects of blogging, for example, creating tables. So let's just assume that this training plan was correct. Well, I asked it to put the plan into a table I can use in a blog post, and it produced this almost instantly for me. So now we could paste this into the blog post and it would save me a lot of time formatting a table. Uh, alternatively, I could just post a training plan that I know that's accurate into ChatGPT and ask it to turn it into a table for me. So you can see it's good for saving time on tasks like this, but don't assume that everything it produces is factually correct. What it produces is a starting point rather than an end point. And that brings us back to the Google search guidelines, which basically describes that your content should be useful and helpful. So if you're publishing an incorrect training plan, it's not really that helpful. And it should also have uh, some ex demonstrable expertise. So again, I may want to, you know, attach a byline to this article by somebody who's trained for a half marathon rather than just simply having it published by somebody who's anonymous. While researching competitor content, I also found they often include pacing strategies. These explain how fast or slow you're going to run to hit your target time. ChatGPT's uh, results were quite good. So it's always good advice to start out conserv conservatively for a half marathon so you don't burn out. And then you would pick up the pace as the race progresses. And then ChatGPT says the final stretch is where you should give it your all. Now, arguably, you wouldn't give it your all uh, if you have three miles or 5k left. You might wait till the last mile. So I might edit this particular section. Now, however, the pacing strategy was missing target times for achieving my time of a sub two hour half marathon. So ChatGPT apologized for this omission. Thank you, ChatGPT. And then gave me some times that I could include uh, for each of the miles. And then I could include these with the article as well. If you've written an article, you can also use ChatGPT to tidy it up and to help with formatting. So here's an article I wrote about half marathon training tips. And I asked ChatGPT to add some H2s and format it as HTML so I could copy it onto my WordPress site. 
And you can see ChatGPT took a minute to do this, but it's created a HTML code that I can copy and paste as is into WordPress. So this is a bit of a time saver too. You can also use ChatGPT to check your blog post for grammar errors. So use a prompt like this, check this article for errors and then paste in the blog post in question. Now I would actually recommend not putting in the entire blog post because ChatGPT will simply output a corrected version and you might find it difficult to see what it's changed or fixed for you. Instead, I'd recommend putting in individual sections. I'd also recommend using a grammar checker like Grammarly. And I have another video on this channel where I compare ChatGPT to Grammarly and I give you some more detailed tips about using this AI tool to grammar check your articles. So if you are interested in doing that, do check out that video. Now that I've written the article, I want to write a number of related articles that I can publish on the site. And again, ChatGPT is quite good at this type of ideation. So I've asked it to suggest five articles I could commission. So how to prevent common running injuries, the best cross training activities for half marathon runners, nutrition strategies, how to build mental toughness and advanced half marathon training techniques. So I would just need to go and check the keyword volume for each one of these blog posts before I actually decided to write it or commission it. A different approach involves asking ChatGPT to prepare a topical map. So a topical map basically describes a blueprint for all of the articles that you're going to write or blog about or publish related to something specific for your site. So I put in this prompt to ChatGPT. I've published the article, provide me with a topical map of related articles. And it suggests that I publish articles about nutrition, cross training, running gear, mental and emotional health, injury prevention and recovery. All good topics to cover. However, my feedback is that this is all quite general. So nutrition for runners could apply to sprinters, short distance runners or long distance runners. And how all of these people fuel would vary by the race and by their preferred event. The same applies to cross training and running gear and equipment. So for example, a trail runner is going to need different running gear and equipment to a half marathon runner. And this is the takeaway from using ChatGPT. You need to be more specific with the prompts that you give it if you're gonna get some value. So I asked ChatGPT, can you rework that topical map so it focuses specifically on half mar marathon training rather than running in general? And now it suggested that I cover uh, different training strategies for half marathon, nutrition and hydration for a half marathon, cross training and injury prevention for a half marathon. And it's given me some suggested headlines. Now, my next step will be to check the keyword volume for each one of these topics before going ahead and commissioning or writing or blogging about them. As you can see, ChatGPT is quite a helpful tool for bloggers and online writers. But it's fair to say ChatGPT isn't going to replace writers anytime soon. Good writing involves the author or the writer inserting a little bit of themselves into their work. Readers want personal stories and they want something that's entertaining, not just informative. And that's something that only a human can do. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.